Coffee production is one of Uganda's prominent agricultural economic subsectors. Coffee is grown by many farm families mainly as a major cash crop. It is the main source of livelihoods for a large section of the rural population in Uganda. Despite its significance, the coffee production subsector has over the years faced challenges that limit the prospective productivity levels. It is against this background that the National Union of Coffee Farmers and Agribusiness Enterprises, NUCAFE, is steadily promoting the implementation of the National Coffee Policy Intervention in Uganda. Using support provided by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, NUCAFE is advocating for effective participation of women and youth in the coffee production value chain. The goal of the policy is to guide and regulate activities of the various stakeholders in the coffee industry so as to improve coffee production, processing and marketing. Naomi Masika is a successful coffee farmer based in Karangura sub-county. She is the chairperson of Karangura Peak Coffee Modern Association Limited. She shares her concerns with regard to family relations that used to undermine the effective participation of women and youth in the coffee value chain before the inception of the gender-based advocacy for the implementation of the national coffee policy in Uganda. Women could do a lot of work and uh, when it comes to, to the market, women are left behind. They don't earn anything when they are selling coffee. The, the family relationships were very, very bad. Uh, people could fight with ignorant things. Mostly when the men could, could take the money, so the men could misuse the money. So when the woman asks where is the money, you find that there is war at home. And improvement, improvement of family holds, we are not there. The traditional cultural setting in many coffee-growing families used to dictate that women and youth do much of the work across the coffee value chain. As a result, women and youths were exploited since the income from coffee production is strictly controlled by men who are the head of the household. Women and children in coffee farm households are usually exploited by the husbands who are the head of the family. Women and children do much of the farm work in terms of tilling the land, planting and harvesting. Husbands usually come in at the time of marketing after selling the coffee. They control the income and take independent decision with regard to how the income will be expensed. In most cases, our children miss out on going to school and are also denied the opportunity of access and ownership of land. Besides the traditional cultural setting that provides men with overall control of family resources, access and ownership of land is a critical factor that many women and youth coffee farmers have pointed out. Collateral or security, whereby the women and youth have a challenge of providing collateral whenever they want to access financial services, especially from the banking institutions. And also the issue of culture, which puts women below men, in that it's just a belief that women cannot really do much like men. Currently, I have uh, 4,000 coffee trees, but it's a challenge because we are densely populated in Kapchora. Uh, the 4,000 coffee trees is on 11 different pieces of land, just because of land fragmentation. And it's very hard to get somebody owning uh, uh, more than two acres of land in one place. So that's the greatest challenge we have. 
inability to access or own land is a hindrance factor that impacts on the effective participation of women and youth in the coffee production value chain. As a response to the challenges that hinders effective participation of women and youth in the coffee production value chain, New Cafe has endeavoured to advocate for gender equity and development of a coffee policy. The policy is going to help the youth in realising that their work in coffee production is of great value to the coffee society and to the coffee value chain at large. Then secondly, I think that parents also will realize that their youth or their children need to participate in the coffee production. So they need to give them access to their land so that they produce because they are more energetic than them since their parents are getting elderly. So this, this will bring sustainability of coffee production at large. Uh, this coffee policy has promoted gender whereby man, woman, man, women and uh, children all come, come around the table and plan for the money that has come out of the coffee. When that one is done, really it has created the relationship among the families, when that children are going to school, uh, women are getting involved in, uh, uh, children are getting involved in, uh, in the process of growing coffee. And the new cafe has really done it because it is the one implementing this in our area, and yet, at least we are improving. The policy clearly states that coffee development services shall be provided to all farmer categories as individuals or groups, ensuring gender equity with emphasis on women and youth. The policy further states that farmers shall be empowered to participate at all stages of the coffee value chain through their organizations. This calls for mainstreaming women and youth perspectives in the implementation of the national coffee policy. So we are working on the coffee policy implementation project and whereby we are creating awareness with the groups that we work with on issues of the coffee policy. So this has helped the groups which we work with to get more information on how the coffee value chain can be promoted. So some members in our groups have uh, developed the urge to access, for example, the coffee planting materials, the seedlings that are being supplied through the government program. So because of the awareness, even the quality of the coffee is being improved on because farmers no longer dry their coffee on bare ground. Yeah, so we request that we are given copies that are really translated in our local languages so that farmers and be in position to also read it themselves. Our family relation was very poor with the head of family dictating on all family issues. I convinced my husband to attend a gender awareness training organized by New Cafe. Our relationship has since improved. We now plan and work together and live in harmony as a united family. The gender training is very ideal for Edgar Chiberu and his family. Edgar used to admire working closely with his wife. The couple attended a gender training organized by New Cafe, where their aspirations were cemented and fulfilled. The family started investing in both coffee growing and a variety of other food and cash crops. In addition, the family decided to diversify by starting a pig rearing project. We have tremendously benefited from the gender training organized by New Cafe. As a family unit, we plan, work together, and take joint decisions for the betterment of the family welfare. Besides, the training provided a rare opportunity for exposure and building partnerships with other farmers. Our family income has increased and we are assured of food security. Our livelihood is much better than ever before. New Cafe, the gender training inspired us to work together as a family unit. The cooperation is very useful and beneficial. 
We help each other in meeting the family expenditures, including paying school fees. Under the gender-based advocacy for the implementation of the national coffee policy in Uganda, Nukafe conducted awareness, consultative and training meetings targeting women and youth farmers. In the past, many families were disintegrated almost because there was no equity in the families. And now actually it is our concern to see that the youth, the women and the Heads of the families work together in order to enhance uh, the property uh, development. Uh, it is very important that when we are united and when we work together, our associations, our groups uh, will have a good theme whereby they will work together and the quality and the quantities of our coffee will improve. We are most interested in seeing that when we are together, working together as families, there will be development. Our livelihoods will improve, our incomes will also improve, and the entire you know, nation will be developed. The consultative meetings were among others intended to enrich women and youth with specific women and youth aspects of the national coffee policy, developing strategies and building the capacity for women and youth to enhance their positioning and participation in the national coffee policy implementation. The main reason why we are having the consultative meetings within, for farmers in the different regions is actually to to get their issues that are pressing to their hearts that they think that government has not yet tackled but believe should be uh, taken care of. For example, the women and the youth, more especially, who are not so much involved in the coffee value chain. If there are those who are involved, they're actually a very small percentage. So the main event today is to get the issues that are affecting the farmers and to strategize also us as farmers what we should do, what is our way forward on this activity or how are we going to help them and also to find minimal solutions at this stage that we can take on as government is also preparing to get onto the activity. Uh, of course the activity is being funded by USAID. Uh, it's a gender based project actually. It is to actually encompass and bring more farmers, more women and youth into the Coffee Valley chain. Participants in the Central Regional Consultative Meeting held in Masaka discussed the existing challenges and success stories in coffee production. Women labor a lot and earn peanuts. Family relations are expected to improve if this perception is changed. Men are too rigid. If they can accept to listen to advice by other family members and attend gender training workshops, hopefully they will change their attitude. The family relations will improve and homes will become more stable. In most cases, whenever men are planning, they do not involve or consult their wives. Neither do they inform their wives about the distribution, allocation and expenditure of the family income and from the sale of coffee. There is no transparency, particularly on the side of men. This is a consultative meeting held in southwestern region of Uganda. Participants share ideas with regards to effective participation of women and youth in the coffee production value chain. If the youth take coffee production as a business and they implement it through the policy, through maintaining the quality, through increasing the production, I think their income will increase higher with a higher percentage. And the, the other challenge of 
of the youth running for white collar jobs will reduce in the country. We had to look at a gender policy whereby it helps us men, women and the youth to be evolved in the land joint agreements and season making after sales of the coffee. And when we looked at the processing uh, of coffee, that is marketing, we came up that most of the farmers at household level, we had not known where to sell our coffee. But when we went with the weight processing coffee, we were able to get premium, that is second payment after sales. And this was due to the quality of coffee that we would move from 70 to 87% after the development of the men, the youth, and the women working together. New Cafe is also promoting the youth and coffee innovations for increased job creation through a well-facilitated coffee festival in the coffee value chain. In this respect, New Cafe organized sub-regional festivals where women and youth farmers showcased coffee products and agribusiness enterprises. The festivals were conducted in three coffee-growing regions that comprise of central, eastern and southwestern Uganda. The festivals were organized as one of the means of enticing women and youth into the coffee sector at different stages of the coffee value chain. The festivals provided an excellent opportunity for promoting youth and coffee innovations through facilitating increased exposure to opportunities and networking for increased job creation in the coffee value chain. New Cafe is to organize a regional festival and this is one of them in all the four growing regions, the central, eastern, southern and west. So far we've, we've had one here in Kamuli covering the eastern region, like they, they've come together to showcase what they are doing and also to network. And the main essence is to increase the coffee, coffee, coffee consumption, which is also stated in the national coffee policy as an objective. So we are trying to promote our coffee consumption by drinking our own coffee. Among others, New Cafe intended to use the farmers' festivals to foster promotion and building of strategic business partnerships and relationships for the youth and women through networking and collaboration in the coffee value chain. Besides building of strategic business partnerships and relationships for the youth and women, New Cafe is creating increased awareness about coffee business opportunities and healthy benefits for increased domestic coffee consumption. This is intended to promote domestic consumption of coffee as well as enhancing the coffee industry competitiveness and developing the domestic coffee markets. Participation of technical local government authorities provides support and sustainability of community development initiatives. New Cafe is actively engaging local government authorities to tap into support structures that are mandated to conduct regular monitoring and provide support supervision to ensure implementation of government policies, including the coffee policy. We should work very hard to ensure there is good production especially in the agricultural product. Like when it comes to coffee, coffee is a long-term investment and when you have successfully managed it, you will live to remember. The national coffee policy is a welcome intervention. It provides regulatory measures and guidance to coffee farmers and in particular women and youth.
The project implemented by New Cafe has resulted into positive transformation leading to equitable benefits for coffee farm families.